Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. In this one, I'm going to be talking about how narcissists like degrading sex. But before I begin, please do give this video a thumbs up down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm and it will support our community. And also, I am in a hotel room, so please try to ignore this image in the background. I'm not a Marilyn Monroe supporter or fan, but it's just there. So just try to focus on the message. But yes, narcissists like degrading sex. The original title for this video was going to be Narcissists Have Sick Sexual Fantasies. But then I realized that it would have been unfair than just for me to give it that title. Because we all have sexual fantasies. I have them. You have them. And while some of those fantasies may be strange or unusual, as long as they don't lead to behaviors that are harmful or dangerous, and they're not practiced on an unwilling participant, then who am I to judge? And that's why I decided to rename the title of this video. Because I don't want anyone to feel judged for having their own sexual fantasies. Your mind is for you. That's why it's called your mind. So if it excites you and brings you pleasure, enjoy it. I'm not judging you. What I'm talking about in this video is very different. I'm talking about degrading behaviors that are often practiced with unwilling participants, which is something that malignant narcissists typically engage in but it's not talked about enough. And I'm sure there are many victims out there who are suffering in silence, which is why I felt compelled to create this video for those victims of sexual abuse, whether you're male or female. But as I've said in previous videos, narcissists experience sexual attraction very differently to normal people. They are not sexually attracted to people in a normal social, psychological, or intimate way. It's one-sided, transactional, and potentially even aggressive and violent. Narcissists view sex as a means of gaining power and control, which means that the victim could be anyone. It could be someone in their own family. It could even be a child. And some narcissists may even be involved in bestiality, where they may have sexual contact with animals or pets. In these cases, the activity is abusive and harmful to the child or animal. But as we know, malignant narcissists do not care. They may have preferences for a sexual partner but they will have sex with anyone or anything and they won't feel guilty about it. I have interviewed people who participated in incestuous relationships, as well as men who have been convicted of sexual contact with prepubescent children, and also men who have been convicted of rape. I'm not a psychologist, so I can't diagnose anyone, but I would assume that they were all malignant narcissists, as each of these activities are abusive. So they showed a strong wish to do harm. I have no continued contact with either of these men, and the interviews were for educational purposes only, 
Of course, I would never consider any further contact with anyone who is engaged in these types of activities unless they are undergoing intensive therapy. But even then, the contact will be limited. But yes, believe it or not, but bestiality is actually still legal in several countries, including Japan, Cuba, Russia, and Chile. I have never interviewed anyone who has engaged in bestiality. So my knowledge and experience is quite limited in this area. I have been a vegan for the past four years. And as many of you may know, I raised my cat from the age of eight weeks. Her name is Nala and she is now six years old. So as you can probably imagine, bestiality is quite a sensitive subject to me. But if anyone is watching this and they have engaged in bestiality or if they know anyone who has, who is interested in having a private interview with me, I would be open to having an interview to further my knowledge. And of course, I will not judge. I have been studying narcissistic personality disorder for the, for the past five years. And I have noticed a clear pattern of behavior in the people that I interviewed. The men who were convicted of rape were all in denial. They refused to acknowledge the truth or they tried to justify their wrongdoing as though there was just some misunderstanding, probably because they know that it is shameful behavior. But then there is also the possibility that some of them aren't lying. As statistics show that between 2% and 10% of convicted individuals in US prisons are innocent because it is actually quite common for defendants to plead guilty to a crime that they did not commit. It's often just the claimant's word against the defendants and the defendant is told that they will get a lighter sentence if they just plead guilty. So of course, yes, there is the possibility that some convicted rapists are actually innocent. But despite that, there is always this pattern of denial as though they know that their behavior is something to be ashamed of, which is very different to what we see from those who have engaged in sexual activity with prepubescent children. Pedophiles often boast about their crimes. They're not even ashamed of what they've done because they're very different to rapists. Rapists tend to be malignant narcissists or sociopaths, so they will often feel embarrassment. But pedophiles tend to be psychopaths, which means that they do not have self-esteem regulation issues which would lead them to be sensitive to ridicule. But they do experience a lot of emotional pain, which is often what causes them to make such poor decisions. Because deep down, they actually wish to be loved and cared for. But they feel that all life is worthless, including their own. And unlike the malignant narcissist, they actually see their crimes as their achievements, as something that they have done successfully, rather than something that they feel bad about. If this video has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up down below. But yes, on with the rest of the topic, I have given you a clear distinction between a malignant narcissist and a psychopath. But what both of them share is this drive to do anything to get what they want. 
and they will even use sex as a means to get it. They don't care about a person's age or gender. They are predators. They ruthlessly exploit people and they will even abuse your children. Whether they're children you had from a previous relationship or even the narcissist biological child, they will sexualize them at a young age. They will dominate them and they may molest them. They may also try to take them away from you because they just don't care about anything. They don't value anything in life. They prioritize their own sexual satisfaction and needs and they lack empathy. So they may try to do sexual things with children of the opposite sex. They will groom the child until they get to a certain age and then they will exploit them. They may also have sex with other family members or anyone who is close to you. And it's so that they feel like they've established a position of control. They use sex as a weapon, as a tool to destroy people. Which is why if you are involved with a narcissist, the topic of conversation will always be about sex. Even if they're not having sex with you and they're entertaining multiple sources of supply. They will want to keep sex in the back of your mind because they think that it's an effective tool to control you. But the irony is that they are always the initiators or the conductors because they're controlled by sex, which is why everything is always centered around it. And by the end of it, you will end up hating sex. You will view it as something that just doesn't even mean anything. Because they always force you to think about things you don't want to think about or to do things that you don't want to do. They make you feel like you have to do it or as though there's no other option because they want to destroy your hopes and ambitions. They want to destroy everything that is good about you, which is why they will dominate you sexually. And it may not always be physically, but psychologically until you struggle to trust anyone. You just want to isolate yourself after they've done all of these degrading things to you. And then they disappear and you don't know who they're dealing with because some of them, definitely not all of them, but some of them are actually very physically attractive. So it's very easy for them to find other unsuspecting sources of supply and they will leave you without any closure, without a reason or explanation for why they did what they did, which of course leaves the door open for them to come back, where they will try to have makeup sex with you and they will coerce you into not using protection. And then you end up getting an STI, which is just another part of the abuse because they will, will often do this deliberately to control you. And sometimes they may even try to rape you because narcissists often have rape fantasies. They lack empathy and they have difficulties with intimacy. So they don't care about your perspective. They may not even care if you want it or not. All they're concerned about is their experience and gaining power and control over you. But ironically enough, despite all of these weird sexual fantasies and urges, they're never satisfied. So they often become vindictive and hold on to grudges where they feel anger and resentment. And it's just another reason for them to want to destroy you when all they may really want is just to have sex with you. But then at the same time, they can't stand the thought of you experiencing something that they can't. So it just builds the frustration and resentment, which they then take out on you. And there's just no way for them to resolve it. 
Because even if they try to use makeup sex as a way in and as a means to control you, they still have to see you getting something out of it. So it's like a catch-22. It's a lose-lose situation. Which is why they will often just leave and try to triangulate you with a new source of supply. But even then they're still not satisfied because it's just another illusion. It's no different to what they displayed in the beginning to you. And even then it's likely that they're dealing with someone of their own kind. So they're probably just being manipulated and used as well. And this is just what perpetuates the cycle for them. Where it's like this never ending hunt for supply. But they never end up getting what they want. Because they just can't be satisfied. Which is how they end up with sexual degradation. Where instead of them being able to appreciate and value their sexual experiences with you. They end up engaging in behavior that demeans, dehumanizes, and reduces your dignity and self-worth. And typically in a sexual context. And because of this, you may experience shame. You may blame yourself. You may feel guilty. You may feel like it has something to do with you. Which is what they want you to think. Because of course they love to shift the blame. They love to deflect the shame and dodge any accountability for their actions. But it isn't you. They just can't be satisfied with normal human relations. They have difficulty with intimacy. They can't be vulnerable. So the only joy they can find is in degrading you and making you feel worthless when it's just a projection of how they feel. Because they know there's something seriously wrong with them. Which is why when you heal from the abuse and you're able to trust again, you will find someone who values and appreciates you. And you will realize why it never worked out with them. Because all they're concerned with is power. Because they're very insecure. They're shame based people who are doing everything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. So they end up sexually assaulting you to take away your power. They smear your name. They do everything they can to take power away from you because they're weak and insecure. But in the process of trying to destroy you, they actually end up destroying themselves because they have to destroy themselves first in order to pull you down with them. But many of them don't even care. They don't care if they destroy their own lives. All they're concerned about is the moment and their own personal gratification. They're not thinking about the future. It doesn't even cross their minds. They don't even care about themselves. So why would they care about you or anyone else? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section and hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.